and maybe you can take a note of this question what happened this is my this is my email address if you have any question you can send me the email and also you can ask questions and uh, contact use the WeChat we send an email and in the in the email you can find a QR code and you can scan the QR code to join the WeChat group and you can ask any question about the exam the training the AI techniques in this WeChat group and so here's my name and here's my email address and we got a WeChat group and you can scan the QR code to join the WeChat group and here uh, except me here is another lecture and his name is Fei and also you can if you have any question you can contact her you can ask questions in this uh which are group and so this is the first part so any question contact us and so the goal of this training session is to help you guys to pass the exam so actually you need to pass two exams the first exam name is ACIAAI and the second exam is HCAI exam so HCIAAI is the Huawei's certificate ICT associate it's a certification it's a, a certificate exam and it's a exam in AI and for this exam uh, the duration of this HCI AI exam is one and one and a half hour and uh, there will be 60 questions in total So one and a half hour, you need to answer 60 questions in total and the full mark of this exam is 1000 and the pass mark is 600. So this is the first exam first exam and the second exam is HC AI exam and this is Huawei this is Huawei certificate. This cert right. A A is for academic, academic, and I is for instructors. Yep. So for this exam there will be two sub exams two sub tests as the first one is the lab exam so in the lab exam the duration of this lab exam is two hours and there are 20 questions so for this lab exam you will open 
like a uh, GPL notebook, then there is some questions and uh, you need to write down some code. You need to program according to these questions. So there are about, there, there are about 20 questions and the duration is two hours and the full mark is also 1,000. And the pass mark is 900. And so this is the first sub exam that is the hyphen. So the second sub exam and is a presentation. So this presentation you need you need to choose a topic, any topic about AI and prepare a presentation for about one hour for about one hour and after your presentation you will be asked like for three to five questions according to your presentation and so this is the second sub exam so after the training session you need to pass these two exams maybe one or two weeks later so that is the exam any question about these two exams so actually there are three exams the first is the certification exam and the second is the lab exam and the third one the last one is a presentation give a presentation for about one hour any topic about ai and then you will be asked about three or five three to five questions and so that's all for the exam so for so to help you guys to pass your exam for the certification exam HCIAAI exam uh, you need to focus on the MOOC link, that is the link here. Wait a second. You need to pay attention to this iLearning link and in this link after the course, wait a second. Okay, after co the course, the online course, online mock course, you can find a final exam. And here, this exam will be, you will see a lot of similar questions about between the online course final exam and the SCIA exam. So, for to pass the certificate exam, you need to focus on this final exam, this online exam. And also there are 20, no, 60 questions in total. And so, and uh, we will go back to the note. So for the lab exam, for the lab exam, every day we would send you guys a daily test. So focus on the daily test. And the daily test is a Jupyter notebook. And you can program, you can code, write your code here to answer these questions. So for the lab exam, you need to focus on the daily test every day after the 
training session, we will send you guys the daily test of today. And for the presentation, uh, it will be your choice. You can choose any topic related to AI and pray for about one hour. So any other question about the three exam? It's fine, it's fine, thank you. Okay, if there is no question about this three exam, so we would start the journey and uh, we will talk about the first chapter of AI, that is the overview of AI. So, here is the agenda and today we're gonna talk about the past of AI and why is AI, why is artificial intelligence and now how AI looks like the present of AI. And so in this chapter, the key points about is the first three parts. The first three parts is the core part in this chapter. And uh, we will go through very quickly about these last four chapters so first to talk about ai so first question why is your definition of ai or why when is the first time you hear about the ai the term artificial intelligence or when you think that ai will be the trend of the future or you any, anything you want to talk about AI, your definition of ai and when you heard about the name ai artificial intelligence uh, during the bachelors we heard about ai okay and uh, it's, uh, it's intelligence machine intelligence uh, yes. the, um, now we hear ai being used in uh, different devices uh, google is using ai amazon samsung and so forth okay thank you and <laughs> so to talk about ai so the big news in recent year is, of course, the rise of AI in, two, in 2016, the AlphaGo defeated the World Championship, World Go Championship that is from South Korea, the CEDO, and by four, in four of five, in four out of five games, and here, that is the race of AI, that is, the time, the point that everyone start to talk about every, it, talk about artificial intelligence. So <laughs> actually, in last century, in last century, about maybe 90, 1990s, machines has already surpassed human beings surpassed us in some limited domains. So like Chase. So Go and Chase are both two very popular board games. And in, 90, in 1997, actually the Deep Blue uh, AI from IBM has already surpassed, have already defeated the Chase champion chase championship but at that time people are not that surprised people are not surprised we are, we, we were not that impressive because we all thought that the goal go game is the most complex board game in the in the world and uh, at that time the blue defeated the world championship the world chase championship by brutal force by brutal force but 
for Go Games, we can never ever defeated human beings. We can never ever solve the Go game by brutal force. So in the Go game has already been played by us human beings for about maybe 2,500, 2,500 years. And this is the oldest board game that still being played today. So Go game cannot be swapped by brute force and they cannot be pre predicted because So we will go back to the notes. So for Go games, there are over 10 powers of 10 powers of 170 possible moves in Go games. So put this figure, 10 power of 170 possible moves to put this figure more perspective. So let me tell you another figure, another number that is 10 power of 80. So this figure, what does this figure mean? This number mean? So this figure means that there is only 10 power of 80 atoms in the observable. Uh, but the, the, in the observable universe. <laughs> so you can compare these two figures, you will know how many possible modes in Go games. So we cannot not ever solve Go games by brute force. So, um, so that's the reason why people are not so impressive in 19 in 1997 when they uh, when they blue defeated the world chase game championship but everything changes but unfortunately unfortunately in 2016 the AlphaGo from Google defeated Lisado in four out of five games and so from that time, artificial intelligence becomes a very popular keyword in our daily life. And so, and more impressively, just one year later, that is 2017, just one year later, Alpha, Alpha Zero surpassed the ability of AlphaGo only with 40 games of learning by play against itself. So Alpha Zero defeated AlphaGo. Defeated AlphaGo only within 40, 40 days. So how alpha zero nerve? So it nerve by it will play against itself over by over by over again, and so without any human interaction. So that is the risk of AI. So that is the time when everybody talk about artificial intelligence. So this chapter we can talk about the past of AI. So that. The, to talk about the past of AI, we may start from a very, very famous workshop that is the birth of AI. That is where the term artificial intelligence come, come. that is the Damos workshop, that is the birth of AI. So the birth of AI is in 
1956. So in 1956, John, Mac John McCarthy invited a lot of famous scientists and mathematicians. They invited them to Dartmouth College and their top the topics they discussed is how to make machines simulate human learning process and other features of intelligence. So in other words, their topic is how to make machines as intelligent as human beings or how to make machines surpass human intelligence. So that is the topic. A lot of famous sci scientists like John McCarthy, Marvin, Min Marvin Minsky, and Klon Shanglong, and the father of information theorem. And so the workshop ran for about two months. And finally, there's no consensus was reached. So they talk about this topic for about two months and a lot of famous scientists and mathematicians, but there's no result, there's no consensus. And the reason why there's no consensus, you know, of course, because of the computing power, because of the hardware, the computing storage and other technical problems and then another problem, why there's no consensus was reached because they are all famous scientists and mathematicians. They all have their own opinions and they all have their own thoughts. And so everyone want to persuade, everyone want to ask, persuade others to follow their opinions. So that is another reason why there's no consensus was reached and so but at Dark Mouse work workshop in ninety in nineteen seventy six they just picked the name the artificial intelligence for this field. So artificial intelligence is a technology that to make machines as intelligent or surpass human intelligence to make machines simulate human learning process and to simulate human intelligence. So that is a birth of AI from 1970, 1956. So. so that is the AI development histories. So actually, from Damo's workshop, the AI made two winters, the first winter and the, the second winter. They just made two winters. The first winter is about in nineteen about in nineteen seventeen, about in nineteen seventeen that the scientists found that the multi-layer perceptual cannot solve XOR problem. So it can only do linear classification, but a very simple nonlinear classification is it will fail to do this XOR or very simple nonlinear linear classification. That is the first winter of AI and the second winter of AI, the decline period is in 1990s. And at that time, uh, in 1990s, because of, of the hardware and because of the hardware, the computing storage and the computing power, because the neural networks and other, other AI algorithms need a lot of computing storage and computing power and, and at that time the hardware are not the data and hardware are <coughs> not sufficient so that is the second winter and then in about here 20, 2016 the AlphaGo defeated the world chase champion Lisido and then AI 
grows dramatically. So that is the AI development history in mid two winters and from the Dartmouth workshop. So as we mentioned that at Dartmouth workshop, there's no consensus what Richard cause these scientists all have their own opinion, own skills. So in the history, in artificial intelligence history, there are three schools. The first school is, we call it symbolism. So what is symbolism? And in, volunteer or any idea about symbolism. Why is symbolism? There are three, three schools. The first is symbolism, and the second is actionism, and the third one we call it behavioralism. So, <coughs> for symbolism, the scientists who believe in symbolism, think that uh, how we make sense of the world, how we make sense of the environment, the things around us by, they think our brain are made up by a lot of patterns. So we make sense of the, of the world by, by patterns, by some principles. For example, as um as a baby, as a baby, in fact, he or she knows nothing about the world, knows nothing about the world. So how the uh, baby, in fact, make sense of the world, maybe by patterns, every pattern got a specific meaning. So for example, uh, the first time when we see an elephant, we 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 don't know the the kind of animal the name is elephant, but our parents would told us that would tell us that uh, this kind of animal we call it elephant. So the baby, in fact, would. So the next time when we see an animal maybe with very long nose and big ears and we 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 will know that this is the ear and this is the nose so next time when we see a animal with very long nose and very big ears and we will know this may be an elephant so that is uh, symbolism. So we know things, we make things of the world by patterns, the world made up by patterns and the principles. Uh, it's just an uh, example. So <coughs> symbols the, is the human connection unit. So symbols, we make things of the world by symbols and patterns. That is the symbolism and here is another example so for the first time when we see an apple we as a baby as a baby in fact we know nothing about why is this so we may know this is an example from the principles and from the patterns maybe the patterns, the structure, the shape, the size, the color. So the an ample should be, the color of, a, of an ample should be maybe a green or red or yellow. And the size of the an ample, shape of an ample and the source, when we see a pattern like this, so it will remind us about the source. Where, where does this pattern from, where does this item comes from. Maybe if it comes from an apple tree and it will look like this, we will know it's an apple and also by category. So that is symbolism. So our brain, scientists who believe in symbolism think that our brain are made up by 
patterns and the principles. And next question is, why is connectionism? So I introduced the definition and the example of symbolism. So maybe you can guess why is connectionism, or you can give your definition about connectionism. Or give an example of connectionism. Neurons and brain. Yeah, new neurons and brain. That is two key words in connectionism. So the first group of scientists who believes in symbolism think that our brain are made up by patterns and principles. And the second group of scientists who believe in connectionism think that. So our gate, our goal of artificial intelligence is trying to make machines as in intelligent as human beings, trying to make machines to simulate human learning process and how how we how to how to learn, how to make things of the world. We will use our brain to make things of the world. We will use use our brain to make decisions to learn. So scientists who believe in connectionism nurse about the structure of our brain. Nurse about the structure of the brain. So they use functions, they use functions to simulate the structure of our brain. So the basic structure of our brains are neurons. So we will use neurons, we will use functions to simulate the structure of these neurons, use mathematic functions and then we connect a lot of neurons together, like in our brain, there is a lot of neurons comes together. So we we use mathematic functions to create a lot of arti artificial neurons. That these neurons are just some equations. So that is con connectionism. So <laughs> today, a lot of AI algorithms, the most popular AI algorithms were known as neural networks. So neural networks is kind of neural networks. These kind of algorithms are all for all follows the connectionism. So here, so that is connectionism. And in connectionism, there is an ample in connectionism. So these are neurons. For example, these are neurons, and so we we don't know what does every neuron mean. But but what we all know is, if we connect these neurons together, and it will give us an result and prediction that this pattern is an apple. So here is a scientist who believes in connectionism, like Marvy Minsky. So that is the second school. So the third school is about behaviorism. So uh, why is behaviorism? So scientists who believe in, who follow this behaviorism also trying to make sense of the world by the environment. So also take a baby in fact as an example when we were a baby in fact and we know nothing about the world and how we make sense of the world maybe by interact with the, with the environment. We interact with the environment and we, we will have some actions and we do we we will have some actions and when we interact with the environment maybe like we touch the fire and we will get a uh, feedback we will get some feedback and uh, so according to the feedback we will adjust our action we will adjust our 
behavior next time. Uh, so that is behavioralism. So uh, for behavioralism, we will have a uh, agent and the agent will interact with the environment and then we'll, we do, we will have some actions and then we will receive some feed forward, feed, we will receive some feedback, some uh, maybe it's a penalty. Uh, if the, pen, the feedback is a penalty, maybe the next time I will not do the, some similar things again. For example, if I touch a fire and it, it hurts, so next time I will never touch a fire. And maybe when I do something, when I do something good, uh, when we were young and we will receive some candies or some, some other good things. So some candies or we, we got some more time to watching, watch TV. So, so the next time we will prefer to do the same thing again. So that is behavior mechanism. We will interact with the environment and we will receive some feedback. So <laughs> that is behavior links. And so like the reinforcement learning is a kind of, is a type of algorithm that follow the behavior lesson. So that is the three skills of artificial intelligence. We mentioned about the symbolism, the connectionism, and the behavior lesson. So, wait a second. So here, from the history of the chase game, the AI chase game, and maybe from also 1976 till now, we will know that actually these three skills are merged together gradually. So for, for example, AlphaGo, it use deep learning. Deep learning is an uh, algorithm that follows connectionism and it also use uh, reinforcement learning and it's a type of algorithm that follow behaviorism. So these three skills merged together gradually. So that is the part of AI. And so the key point of this section is uh, we mentioned about the Birth of AI, that is Dharma's workshop, and the three schools of AI connectionism, behaviorism, symbolism. And then we will move to the next section that is what is artificial intelligence? So, what is artificial intelligence? So, anyone gives the definition of artificial intelligence. AI means to make machine intelligent through data? Uh, yes. So actually the definition of artificial intelligence is a topic that the scientists discussed in Dartmouth workshops to make machines to make machines intelligent from data to make intel to make machines as intelligent as human beings or surpassed human intelligence. So here is the definition of artificial intelligence. It's a technique science that studies and develop, develops serious method technologies applications. So the aim is for simulating and extending human intelligence. So to learn AI, so we may need some knowledge from computer science, from brain science, from, from, from logic, from philosophy. So that is AI. AI is a cross subject. subject. And here, the next we're going to talk about. So the first, this slide will talk about definition of AI, and then we will talk about the 
hierarchy of AI in industries. So to make AI work in industries, here is a hierarchy from the low level to high level. So first we need infrastructures. Why does infrastructure mean? So infrastructure means so to create AI models, to create AI like AlphaGo or AlphaZero or other AI for uh, natural language processing or speech recognition for computer vision, we need infrastructures. So that is the hardware. So what for hardware, we mean the computing power, computing storage, and big data. We need data, we need computing power, we need computing storage. So, so the computing, computing power, just like the few know of artificial intelligence of the model, so big data. We need a lot of data. So AI, especially neural networks, this kind of algorithm is the data-driven algorithm. We need a lot of data, large amount of data to train the model, to make the model work. Data like the experience to us human beings. And also we need computing storage. So computing storage like a container, like, like a container, or to like a container to AI and we need to store the data, store all the data using the computing storage and then the second level, that is the lowest level and the second level is everything. So we got computing power, computing storage and the big data. So how to make this data useful, how to make use of this data that's a large amount of data. So we need algorithms, we need strategies, and we need principles to make use of this data that is algorithm. So today in AI, this machine learning and deep learning, machine learning and deep learning are the most popular AI algorithms. So this is just two examples of algorithms so that is the second level that is algorithms to make use of this data to extract some information from this data so that is algorithm so the third level is the technology direction so we got machine learning and deep learning algorithms and the next level we got a lot of technology directions like computing, like, like computer vision, like speech processing, speech recognition, language, natural language processing, like decision making system or data analysis. And that is the technology direction. And every technology direction got a lot of sub subtopics for example computer vision so got a lot of subjects subtopics like image recognition image processing video recognition human behavior detection and <laughs> semantic understanding and content understanding a lot of subtopics in computer vision also a lot of subtopics in speech recognition in speech processing like speech recognition speech synthesis and also for natural language processing, a lot of a lot of subtopics like the machine translation, like the sentiment analysis, and so that is the fourth level of the hierarchy of AI. That is some subtopics, and so the highest level is the industry solutions. We will combine these subtopics together so to solve some specific problem in industries like for example the autonomous cars the safe driving cars we need technologies not only from computer vision but also from speech processing and the natural language processing so that is the hierarchy of ai from the infrastructure 
infrastructure slides hardware to the algorithms. Some typical example is machine learning and deep learning algorithms. And then we will move to the second level as the technology direction. We talk about some topics like the computer vision, speech recognition, speech, rec speech processing, and the lighter language processing. And then the fourth level is about some subtopics of this technology direction, that is image recognition, image segmentation, and speech recognition or ma machine translation, etc. And then we combine these a lot of subtopics and to solve the industry problems like the self-driving cars, like smart healthcare, like smart finance, fine tech, VR, AR, and smart homes, that is hierarchy of AI in industries. So next slide, we will discuss the relationship between AI machine learning and deep learning. So the question is, so, why is the relationship between AI machine learning and deep learning? Any volunteer? Yeah. Uh, machine, machine learning is a subset of AI, and uh, AI, uh, machine learning uh, basically uses the concepts of AI and to uh, teach the machine to how to work and how to learn like the human. Yeah. Uh, and usually, uh, it learns our patterns. Yes. What about deep learning? Uh, deep learning uh, is uh, is when you uh, give something to the machine and tell it to learn it yourself. Like he experiments it uh, slowly, slowly uh, on the data, and then he makes a complete model out of the data, and then he started starts applying that on some other uh, real world examples. Like for example, the text prediction in our phones, it's, it's a kind of example of deep learning. Okay, thank you very much. And what's the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Uh, actually, uh, machine learning uh, is the basic form of uh, like teaching your machine something. And deep learning is kind of like a complex uh, form in which uh, the machine uh, uh, learns from the data itself. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, I hope I'm right. Yeah. So, any other explanation about? Uh, okay. So, so when we talk about artificial intelligence, we uh, we said that artificial intelligence is basically to simulate the human intelligence. So there yes. could be various parts to human intelligence. Intelligence. We are intelligent because we can sense, we can navigate and because we can learn. So when we talk about machine learning, we are targeting the learning part of human intelligence. Deep learning is then one step, we go one step ahead and we try to uh, kind of simulate the working of human brain, how human brains does that learning. So this okay. is my understanding thank of the question. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Any other volunteer, anyone wanna share? No idea. Yes, please. Yes. I think deep learning is, uh, we can say, is also a, a subset belongs to the field of artificial intelligence in machine learning, where we have to deal with unsupervised data. Uh, and in machine learning, there are uh, there are various type of uh, processing that we done according to machine learning predefined algorithms. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Any other I, volunteer? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Uh, deep learning yes. is the advancement of neural networks that uses neural networks to build uh, models for the complex or large amount of data. And those yes. deep learning, uh, all those deep learning models do the feature extraction by uh, themselves. No manual feature extraction is required. The model itself do, uh, do the uh, feature extraction. Okay, thank and you these, so much. The, and these models yes. are more uh, robust and reliable as compared to standard or normal uh, conventional machine learning algorithm. Okay, thank you, thank okay. you. Uh, okay. Yes, please. If, if, if we just talk about the AI, so 
in in the holistic view ai is this umbrella term and machine learning is the subset of the ai however further deep learning is further sub subset of the machine learning yes so, thank you thank you so much so here as a diagram shows the relationship between AI machine learning and deep learning. So AI is a very large topic and machine learning is a solution of artificial intelligence. And so machine learning is a subtopic of AI and deep learning is a subtopic of machine learning. And machine learning is a kind of algorithm that we make a model we create a model and let the model to explore some inform some useful information from the data automatically and the deep learning is a subtopic of machine learning so deep learning is the algorithms that based on neural networks so this deep means we got a lot of hidden layers so we call it deep learning a lot of layers so that is deep deep learning we use new neural networks to extract the features to extract some useful information from the data automatically so that is the relationship between ai machine learning and deep learning so the any example about machine learning algorithms Machine learning example about machine learning algorithm. It's a machine learning algorithm, but not a deep learning algorithm. Uh, regression, linear regression. Yes. Sport vector machine, yeah. live base, uh, decision yes. tree. Yes. Uh, 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 there are many. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Popular are these one. Yeah, thank you so much. Home forest, XG boost, voting classifier, these are other. Yes, yes, yes. The linear regressions, logistic regressions, and uh, K and, and K K means clusterings, and a lot of other like maybe Bayes and also decision decision trees and the reinforcement learning are all. Algorithms that belong to machine learning, but not a topic of deep learning. And for deep learning algorithms, that is the algorithms we also talk about, like CNN, RNN, LSTM, and again, a lot of algorithms. And another question is um, can you give me an example? Um, the algorithm that belongs to artificial intelligence, but not a topic of artificial, but not a topic of machine learning. So the algorithm here it is an algorithm in ai but not an algorithm that belongs to machine learning any volunteer sorry can you the question uh, okay i will repeat the question so uh any algorithm that uh, here drop here so it is a algorithm that belongs to artificial intelligence it's an artificial intelligence it's an algorithm to solve artificial intelligence problem but it's not an algorithm belong to belongs to machine learning so not a machine learning algorithm but a ai algorithm but a, a algorithm to solve ai problems yes. there are so many algorithms for finding the shortest path for example a star algorithm yes so, any other example? Yes. Like, I is also try. an example of AI in artificial intelligence. Uh, par pardon? Sorry? Alexa, Alexa. Al Alexa. So, okay, I will give an example of a uh, algorithm that in AI, but not a uh, machine learning algorithm, maybe rule based algorithm. So, this for example, that is actually what I know that uh, 
the ultimate objectives of artificial intelligence is to build intelligent system uh, sorry intelligent agents the agents can interact through the environment using different uh, techniques the algorithm they may be from uh, ai or from maybe machine learning the focus of those algorithm is uh, on the searching techniques or maybe on uh, uh, different uh, what can i see <laughs> on, on different algorithms and uh, from natural language processing from uh, uh, image processing or from maybe uh, from other domain uh, for other areas so uh, ai focuses on the development of intelligent agents what i understand okay thank thank you i am not right <laughs> okay thank you here the typical example of these kind of algorithm maybe is rule based algorithm so like for example here uh for yeah. maybe face detection here here is a image a face image and the face picture and we want to detect the eye the eye where is the eye of the face so here we we can use a pattern or pattern like this zero one zero this kind of pattern so this kind of pattern may be represent the eye of us like here so that is the uh, so this zero one zero this kind of pattern we can use a pattern like this to detect the eye in a face so that is a rule based algorithm and this is an algorithm to de detect our eyes so that is rule-based algorithm an example of, being of algorithms that in artificial intelligence but not a machine learning algorithm so that is a relationship between ai machine learning and deep learning so here is a very very easy question so deep learning is a subtopic of machine learning, true or false? Of course, true. Okay, yeah. we just, yes. And then we will talk about the present of AI, how AI looks like. Now, maybe we will have maybe 15 minutes break and then we will continue to talk about the third section. So. We will have 15 minutes break and then we will continue. You can drink some water, have some rest. So, Can you give some more examples related to AI, which is not part of the machine learning and deep learning? M more example? Yes. Uh, maybe in computer vision, there are a lot of examples like for example the algorithms for video object detection in videos object detection wait a second Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, at this stage, what I know that uh, it is it would be very difficult for us to uh, clearly draw a hard line between AI and machine learning algorithm. Since uh, presently most of the work is our development is uh, ongoing in machine learning or deep learning. So I think uh, uh, AI and machine learning uh, have some common algorithms or maybe very few those can only be used in AI. Uh, you are right, but you know, if some undergraduate students put this question in front of us that how can we clearly differentiate between these things? So it would be a good idea to have an uh, clear, clearly difference between these. 
Uh, actually, uh, sir, uh, your question is uh, good. Uh, uh, what what I uh, understand that uh, we can build concepts of the students using AI. Most of the implementation of AI it can be done using machine learning algorithm. Rule based classifiers are very fundamental uh, classifiers are algorithms. They are used in almost uh, every uh, means uh, all, means all other algorithms like decision tree. Decision tree is also using decision uh, rule based. It, uh, maybe is built on the uh, rule based classifier. Uh, uh, is uh, same as random forest or um, and other algorithms. So uh, I think uh, our focus during. Uh, uh, the course can be more on machine learning algorithm. Um, uh, what I uh, uh, I gone through the uh, AI book. Uh, the, I think Russell Fawcett um, that was the author of the book. Uh, in in the book, uh, there are almost uh, twenty six chapters, and first five to six chapters are based on agents and searching. And then the remaining chapters are on 3D gates and then algebraic logic, algebraic and logic. And then uh, in the uh, last chapter, uh, the author discuss about different classifiers, classification techniques, clustering techniques, about robotics, and so on. So, uh, what I faced or what I gone through. Okay. Uh, actually, no, not only in computer vision, but in speech recognition or natural language processing, there are a lot of algorithms that belongs to the AI sub subtopic, but not a machine learning algorithm like the for computer vision, like the mean shift and a lot of feature descri descriptor descriptors like H actual histogram of gradient and a lot of other feature descriptors like how a lot of these algorithms are rule-based algorithms and it's not a machine learning algorithm that the the algorithm the machine learning algorithm can extract features from the data automatically but this kind of algorithm we carefully design we carefully designed the templates. We carefully designed the this feature descriptors to match the feature of the object. And so we can use these feature descriptors to maybe do pedestrian detection to do face detection. So these are the examples. These are all rule-based algorithms that but it's not a machine learning algorithm, it's uh, also an algorithm in AI. So, Johan, uh, are, you true, are, you, are you convinced with that, that rule-based algorithm are truly our AI algorithm, our AI, they come in the artificial intelligence? You. Uh, like I'm trying to say, like there is an algorithm, shortest path for SPF. Uh, it is normally used in normal normal routers uh, to find the shortest path, but it does not come into the uh, AI. Like the Dijkstra, Dijkstra algorithm we study in university normally when we undergraduate. So it is it is it is algorithm is used to find the shortest path, but uh, uh, it is it is historically used twenty years back within routers to find the best path. But uh, there is no no word with respect to AI with with respect uh, with respect to that algorithm SPF. Yeah, but the algorithm to find the shortest part, we can use this kind of algorithm in AI applications, right? Okay, okay. But initially, when it was designed, then there is no AI at that time. Like 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 when the scientists developed that thing, they don't have AI in mind. <laughs> so, if we carefully design some principles or some strategies like this, according to the thing, according to the objects, 
So, and we use these templates, we use these strategies or principles in AI applications, we can call it, it's uh, everything in AI, because uh, we can implement the kind of strategies or principles we designed very carefully into AI applications. So it's, it is a uh, everything that in, it is a uh, algorithm belongs to AI and but it's not a machine learning algorithm because machine learning algorithm requires the model to automatically learn some useful things from the data. And it can improve itself from the data automatically. That is a machine learning algorithm, but there is a lot of algorithms like this kind of algorithm this kind of algorithms, we need to carefully design these strategies and principles so it will work in the in some specific applications. So it cannot, this kind of rule-based algorithms cannot automatically extract features, it gets some useful information from the data, but we can also implement this kind of algorithms in AI applications. So we can call it a algorithm in AI, but it's not a machine learning algorithm. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. So 20 minutes break. Kelsey, I have one query regarding WeChat. Yeah, you. I I I just installed WeChat for the first time. Yes. Uh, um, uh, I cannot proceed after a security. Uh, I think verification. Uh, how I can uh, do the security verification? Security verification. Yeah, I am facing the same problem. 
uh, when uh, when WeChat users from other countries uh, uh, try to make account, they ask to verify from other WeChat users. We face problem uh, making WeChat. So, uh, Kelsey, need your assistance in this. So you you maybe for the security verification, maybe you can yeah. screenshot the maybe the security verification and send me the email and we will try to figure out why the question and how to solve the kind of question. You you can send me the email uh, and screen screenshot. Um, And uh, we will okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, before we start, there's some. There is some saying. We need to. Sorry. First thing is that um, you need to change your name, for example, your name like this name um, plus the university. So when you join the meeting, change your name to name plus university. So we, we, we will know who are you otherwise. We have no idea about this. Who are you? So change your name, like this name plus university, name of your university. And another question is about the environment. So for the hands-on practice, we need TensorFlow plus Python. So we use TensorFlow. TensorFlow 1, 1 1.8 or 1.3, 1.4. TensorFlow 1 plus Python, Python 3. Oh, sorry. So change your name to name, your real name plus the university and the environment for the hands-on hands -on practice, we're going to use TensorFlow 1 plus Python 3. So uh, someone asked about the Huawei Cloud. So uh, if you download the environment setup guide from the official homepage of HCI AI, and there will be a requirement for uh, registering a uh, Huawei Cloud account, but it's not now not available in Pakistan. So we will do all the hands-on practice in our PC, in our own computer, on our own computer. And the environment we're gonna install is we're gonna use Anaconda. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, I have installed the uh, latest version of uh, TensorFlow, that is, I guess, uh, version 2.2, uh, and that is the automatically downloaded version. So I'm not sure how to download that one point something that is, I guess, that 1.8 version is required. So, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, please. It's, it's an if you download the latest version of TensorFlow and you can run you can import TensorFlow like this, import TensorFlow compact, the version one STF. So if you download, install TensorFlow 2 and you can use this code, this line to run, the TensorFlow 1 in your TensorFlow 2 environment. So if you want to install here, wait a second. We send, 
We send you. Okay, sure, sure. I get it. I get it. Okay, sure. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, and also we send you a uh, environment setup guide here, and here are the steps to install Anaconda TensorFlow and Python. So we use Anaconda. Anaconda is a very large distribution, and you can use. You can also install Miniconda, a much smaller distribution compared to Anaconda. And so you can download Anaconda and install the Python 3.7 version Anaconda. And then to install TensorFlow, you need to open the Anaconda prompt and use this command, install, pip install TensorFlow and equals equals. And here is the version of TensorFlow 1.8, 1 1.4, 1 1.3, uh, both okay. Excuse me, 1.8.0 is not available. It's not available. So yeah. maybe if it's not available, it will show you the versions that are available. Maybe you can try 1.18, 1.13, 1.14. I want to say something over here on this. 1.5 and then move on to. Yeah, 1.5 is okay. 1. Any? 1.15. 1. 1. 1. Oh, yes, yes, 1.15. If you just uh, write uh, PIP install TensorFlow, it will install the latest available without porting 1.8.0. So, uh, so you need to specify the version of TensorFlow. So equals equals. If you just pip install TensorFlow, it will install the latest finds as TensorFlow yeah. 2. But uh, it's it, it's okay if you install TensorFlow 2, you can use this command to make the Tensor grammars in TensorFlow one work. So here is the environment. The first, the first is change your name to name class university, and then the environment we're gonna use in our computers that is Anaconda plus TensorFlow one plus Python three. Uh, import tensorflow.compact.v1 as your command, but it's not working. It's, you it's not. It's not working. You uh the uh the the t version of TensorFlow you installed is two point two point zero two point one four. So use this command only within TensorFlow 2. If you installed TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2, you can use this command to make the grammars in TensorFlow one, in the grammars in TensorFlow 1 work. So if you installed TensorFlow 1, you just pip install TensorFlow. You just use import, import TensorFlow as TF. So, uh, uh, can can we use Google Collaborative to uh, do the labs? Yeah, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. You can use the. Thank you. Google Thank labs. you. Yeah. And uh, so we will continue to talk about the content in the first chapter, the overview of AI. So. The last two chapter we talk about the part of AI. Why is AI? So the key point that is the point that is some points key points you may encounter during the certification exam. The part of AI we mentioned about the birth of AI in a Dark Mouse workshop in 1956 and the three schools of AI, symbolism, connectionism, behaviorism, and then that is a key point of the first section. And the second section, why is AI? We give the definition of AI. So the officially, the official definition of AI, then, then we talk about the hierarchy of AI in industries. And then the key point of this section is about the relationship between AI, machine learning, and deep learning.
And so we will move to the second section, that is how AI looks like now, that is a present of AI. So first, this slide gives our, us a lot of scenarios of AI, that is self-driving self -driving cars, smart homes, and VR, AR, and fintech, and robots, and smart healthcare. These are all applications of artificial intelligence. So, to, these are, the scenarios are all industry solutions and to make the AI applications work, we need a lot of, we need a lot of technologies. That is, so the three main subtopic of AI application, that is, the first one is speech signal processing, that is speech processing, and some main technology, some subtopic in speech processing, that is, speech recognition, speech synthesis, and the semantic recognition. And we can use the kind of applications like in hands-free scenarios, for example, wait a second. For example, we can use this uh, speech recognition or speech processing as a very useful application, especially in hands-free interactions. For example, during a uh, surgery, we can use speech recognition. We can use speech recognition to that the doctor, the doctors can immediately access to the patient's medical record by just by voice and also the we can use voice to remem to remind the doctors and the nurses the process or specific instructions during the surgery. And also we can use audio recording. We can use audio recording to convert the process, the process of the surgery into the operation recordings. And next time we can check this operation recording recordings and these are hands free interactions and another example another application is that the safe driving safe driving cars and uh, when we are driving a car we we can listen to some messages these are hands free listen to some messages some guides and we can control the map the route by our voice and you can't voice navigation as an example of the recognition. And so computer vision is another subtopic of artificial intelligence uh, AI applications and some Subtopic of computer vision is like image segmentation, content understand, content understanding, image classification, and so on. So the most typical application in computer vision, of course, is the face recognition or facial recognition. And of course, facial recognition got a lot of problems. And here are a lot of titles of face recognition. For example, the face recognition hikers. So nowadays we will use our face to unlock our phones, but it may got some security problems like, uh, for example, the we can a makeup system, a makeup system can kill a face detection or face recognition model. And also, we can use a photo to kill the Windows 10 face recognition system. And here another title is 
we can use a 3D printed mask to kill iPhone's face ID. And this, so although face recognition is the most popular and the most commonly used applications in computer vision, it got a lot of questions. And here, so here is another recognition technology we call it iris recognition. So compared to face recognition, iris recognition will be much more safer, much, much safer. So iris recognition is to recognize a person, recognize a person use the iris and why we can use iris recognition to recognize a person whether it's Tom or Jerry in whether it's Tom or Jerry we can use its iris so the feature of a person's iris is that the pattern the pattern in our iris on our iris are completely random because that means everyone's pattern in the iris in their iris are unique it's unique and then the second feature is that the pattern of our iris would stay the same throughout the entire life so it will never change and it's unique so that's the reason why we can use iris recognition and it's much safer compared to your face recognition and here is a, here is a story and he this is a very, very, very famous cover of Time magazine. So that is an Afghanistan girl. So this picture took in 1985. And uh, at that time, it's very famous image. It's a very famous, famous image. And because this image reminds us of a uh, very famous or the most famous painting in the world. That is Mona Lisa. So this, so, and it's a Afghanistan girl. And this is a girl. This is a girl after maybe in 2002. This is a girl in 2002 and how the reporters and how the scientists find rec recognize that it is the same person uh, it will always feel if we use face recognition technology because the face changes we will get a lot of wrink wrinkles and the the textures on the face will change and you will feel if we use face recognition so here the scientists and the Staff from the Time magazines use iris recognition. Use iris recognition. Although the face will change, but the iris, the patterns in the on the iris of one person will never change. So we will use the iris recognition to recognize it as the same person. And here, so the application of face recognition and the iris recognition and Actually, there are a lot of other recognitions and these are uh, other applications in computer vision like lip reading. So it will help the hearing impaired people to understand the conversations. So here is an example. So we will use deep learning model. We will use CNN model to recognize, to read the leap to do leap reading performance leap reading of a person so you can help some hearing impaired people to understand conversations so this kind of this kind of technology is proposed in 20 17 in 2017 and um, here is the system coded from this 
paper and we it use the CN, CN architecture that the performance of lip reading has already had already beat the professional lip readers on videos from BBC television and another applications like the smart car safe driving cars. So that is the wait a second some applications of computer vision and computer vision actually is the most mature sorry what happened wait a second it's the most mature field in artificial intelligence and Hmm. Wait a second, please. Whoosh. My computer shut down for no reason. Wait a second. I will close all the PowerPoints. And restart it. Okay. So the second direction of AI applications and the third one we're going to talk about is natural language processing. So there, there are also a lot of applications, AI applications in natural language pro processing like I will show you some pictures. Okay. Like the applications we may use every day that is grammar checking or spell checking every time we use google there may be some grammar arrows and so that is application of natural language processing and maybe language model that is we here is a sentence and the model the ai model can predict why is the next word and also the image caption caption generation we input an image and output is a sentence that describes the content in the image and also a typical application of natural language processing is machine translation and we can translate a text or a um, radio from one language to another language for example from chinese to english and tax classification or sentiment analysis. And we can analyze the sentiment and all the options in a tax. And information extraction, information extraction, that is, we can ex extract some keywords from a article or from a from some sentences and like here, game through is an adaption of 
a song of ice and fire and blah 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 it ranks fourth among the imdb top rated tv shows so the keywords in this sentence yes came up through the name of this tv show and the rank as fourth and the rank among imdb top rated tv shows so we can convert this sentence to this and here is another example of information extraction i'm invited to a party next friday at 8 p.m in turing hall so the key point of this sentence is the event is a party and the date is next friday at so that is august 4th and the place that is turing hall so that is the example of natural language processing and <laughs> then to make these applications to make these ai applications work we should use Good luck. Entry line, yes. yeah. yeah, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself. Or uh, if there's no question, please mute yourself. Otherwise, we won't hear some, some noise. Thank you so much. So to make this application work, we need algorithms like machine learning, deep learning, and why is machine learning we've already discussed the definition of machine learning. That is a kind of algorithm that we create a model and the model can extract some useful information from the data automatically that or the model can learn from the data, can improve themselves automatically from the data that is the definition of machine learning so machine learning actually can be divided into four parts so that is the types of machine learning So there are four types of machine learning. The first is supervised learning algorithm. So why is supervised learning algorithm? So supervised machine learning algorithms, we provide both the, uh, the features and the labels to the algorithm. So okay. it's like, it's called supervised because it's something like a teacher, uh, like teaching a student, retelling him, this is yeah. an apple, this is an orange, stuff like that. This is why it's called supervised. Yes, thank <clears throat> you. Thank you. So the supervised learning is a kind of learning algorithm that it can learn from label data. Label data, so just like you see the label data, just like the teachers, the teachers got the right answers and they teach the students the rules, the strategies, of some specific tasks. So that is supervised learning. So for unsupervised learning, so compared to the supervised learning, unsupervised learning is a kind of learning algorithm. We're gonna train, we're gonna learn from the unlabeled data. So that means the model have to discover the rules the informations from the data by itself that means it needs to explore the relationship between samples so 
and typical example of supervised learning is clustering. So we would use clustering as the unsupervised learning algorithm to find the relationship between samples. So the which two samples are similar and which and which two samples are not that similar. So so we can cluster similar samples as a cluster. So we can cluster different, so we can divide different samples into different clusters. So that is unsupervised learning algorithm. So we train the model with unlabeled data. And the next type of machine net learning algorithm is semi-supervised. semi supervised learning algorithm that so that means we will train the model both with labeled and unlabeled data. So for semi supervised learning for semi supervised learning algorithm there are label data and also unlabeled data. So we all know that uh, the data labeling would require a lot of time. We will spend a lot of time if we want to <laughs> do, if we want to create, if we want to solve a, a AI problem, create some, we, if we want to do some AI projects, so maybe over, 60% 60 60 of our, of our time was spent on data labeling. So at that time, we can use semi-supervised learning. An example of semi-supervised learning is that first, we can use label data to create a model. So we can use labeled data to create a model. And the task of this model is to predict the label of a sample. Of a sample, that means the task of this model is for data labeling. So we can use label data to train a model for data labeling. So then we can use this model to label this unlabeled data. So at after these two steps, all the data in our data in, in our data set are labeled data. So then we can do supervised learning. So we can do supervised learning. So that is the third type of machine learning. And the next type of machine learning. So the last type, the last type of machine learning that is reinforcement learning algorithm. So reinforcement learning algorithm is yes. like this. So supervised learning, unsupervised learning. So here is reinforcement learning. That means the model will interact with the environment and it will receive some feedback, some reward or penalty from the environment and according to the feedback, the model can adjust themselves, can adjust the strategy or principles from this feedback that is reinforcement learning. So the four types of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, and the reinforcement learning. So <coughs> then we will talk about another very useful learning. We call it transfer learning. Why is transfer learning? Any volunteer? Why is transfer learning? Uh, transfer learning means using the knowledge that you have gained uh, through one task, using the same knowledge for another similar task. Yes. Uh, so, so the basic idea is that if someone knows 
how to play a guitar, it would be easier for him to play a violin because he knows the basics. Transfer learning is basically mostly used in, in deep learning. Instead of uh, creating a deep learning model from scratch, what we do is we uh, take an already trained deep learning model and then we try to kind of fine tune it for our specific problem. <clears throat> Yes, exactly. So that is transfer learning. So another example is, for example, we got a trend model. So the the this trend model, the first model, they can do maybe image classification. It can recognize whether it's a dog or a cat in the image. And here it comes another task. So this task, we also want to do a image classification task. And so, but at this time, we want to classify whether it's a flower or apple in this image. So similar task, both image classification task, but different objects. So we can use the original model. So the pre-trained model to do the similar task, just fine tune the parameters in the model and it will work. So that is transfer learning. Use the print model to do some similar tasks. And so another uh, everything is deep learning and we will talk about deep learning in details maybe on Wednesday. On Wednesday, yes. Here is an example of deep learning neural networks. And he, this kind of example is, is a neural network for image classification. And we talk about some, the technology directions, the image processing, computer vision, natural language processing, these three fields of AI applications. And then we talk about machine learning, the types of machine learnings and transfer learning and deep learning and so that's all for this chapter so this slide the key point of this slide is that now we are still in the initial stage of ai we are still in the initial stage of perceptual art intelligence and so that is the key points of the third section. So the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh, these four sections are not the key points in this chapter. So we will go through very quickly. And also it's not, uh, it's not the key point for the certification exam or for the HC AI exam. So we will go through very quickly. And here is some um, the fourth chapter, the fourth section talks about some some uh, strategies of industries, strategies of different industries of different companies in the world or different nations or different organizations the AI, their AI strategies. So the first is a brain like search in the world. So different nations, different groups, different got their own brain like search. And here is the industry landscape of AI. So we can divide these companies according to the hierarchy of AI in the industries from hardware, from hardware to algorithms to technology directions and uh, industry solution, industry solutions. For example, the hardwares are uh, mainly for the chips, the AI chips, the CPU, GPU, FG, FPGA, NPU, TPU. These, these are the countries who produce these AI chips, the Google, NVIDIA and also Huawei has their own AI chips. We call it Ascent and also AI frameworks and the most famous AI framework of, of course is TensorFlow from 
Google and the PyTorch from Facebook and MS Lite from Amazon. And Huawei released their own Huawei released their own AI frameworks we call it Mindstay, Mindsball in this April. And here are some AI algorithms and some basic AI surveys. So these are some tight joints in the world of AI. And here the last three section we call we talk about the justice, the equity, and the man machine relationships and the future of AI. First, the AI got a lot of AI has a lot of problems. So first is who would take the responsibility? Why if AI breaks the laws, who will take the responsibility? And then who would protect our privacy? That is another problem. So the third problem is, is the algorithm fair enough? Is the data fair enough? What, what about there will be, what about if there are some discriminations for the algorithm or in the data? So there are a lot of other questions like the copy, copyright questions. So that is the fifth section and the sixth, the sixth section is about the relationship between men and machines. And we can see a lot of movies talk about the man-machine relationships. And this kind of relation, we, we will focus on now AI is still in the initial stage. So we will not worry about man-machine relationship. But when AI comes to the strong AI, we need to worry about the man-machine relationships. And then the future of AI there's you can we, we can all imagine the future the future of AI we can got uh, AI colleagues the soulmate like the Bay Max in the movie and the challenge of AI and we also we also we got a lot of opportunities produced by AI so that is the last section. That is the last section. So that's all for the first chapter. So then <coughs> what we're gonna talk about is the Python chapter. We're gonna talk about programming. Is programming included in today's lecture or tomorrow's lecture? Today's lecture, so we just finished the overview of AI and then we will continue to talk about the Python programming. So, okay. In the next maybe one hour. Okay. Okay. So, uh, here's also the notice, one notice. Yes, uh, maybe you need to, the questionnaire. Uh, we send you a link. Wait a second. We send you a link, and uh, if you can fill the uh, this questionnaire, it will be very helpful for us. Wait a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, you've all received the this email, and at the bottom of this email, there is a link for the background knowledge questionnaire, and it will be very helpful for us if you 
take a part in this questionnaire if you fill these questionnaires and uh, and you need to answer questions about uh, why is your what the your experiments your ai back background and your programming background or well, we, we need to know if your you most of you have ai background or most of you have programming back background and we need to know why is the pro programming language you used mostly so we can adjust the lecture we can adjust what we're gonna talk about during the training session if all most of your guys have python programming experiments so we will go through this chapter very very quickly or so if most of you have tensorflow background and also we will go through the tensorflow chapter very quickly and move to the machine learning and deep learning part so after this lecture hope you guys can do the questionnaire so here uh, we will move to the python group programming basics and you need to pass the hcai exam so lab exam is the is a sub top is a sub exam of the hcia of the hcia exam and <laughs> so after every day's training session after every day's session we will send you guys the uh, daily taste like this you see it yes a daily taste like this here is a question here is a question and uh, you can program here you can call here and to answer these questions according to answer these questions is very easy and uh, so during the lab exam during the lab lab exam you may meet you may encounter some similar questions from the everyday daily test so first is the introduction of python sorry are you going to send us this jupyter notebook Yes, we're gonna send you the Jupyter notebook after the okay. session. Okay, okay. Thank and you. Yes. And uh, here. Just to ask yes. us, uh, actually, I joined a li little bit late. Uh, if we have a J Jupyter lab installed, do we still need the TensorFlow? Ju uh, you mean if we have. Pardon? I, I didn't get. Uh, okay. If we have a Jupyter Lab with Python installed already, uh, yes. do we still need uh, the TensorFlow? TensorFlow yes. is for Python practice. Uh, yes, uh, we need TensorFlow not in this chapter, but the but next chapter. Next chapter we will talk about TensorFlow. So you need install TensorFlow. TensorFlow plus Python. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So the introduction of Python. So we, this is the agenda of this chapter. There's a lot of points. We we talk about the data structures, the list tuples, the strings, dictionaries, and uh, some looping or conditional statements. And uh, we will go through these sections, mainly based on the codes mainly based on the Jupyter notebooks and so for the lab exam you need to be very careful on this chapter the python chapter the tensorflow chapter and also the image classification experiment maybe we will talk about the image classification experiment in maybe friday or Thursday. So we will start this chapter. So first the history of Python. We are not that interested in the history of Python. We just want to know how to use Python. So the, this is the founder of 
hyacin. And so why is Python? So of course, Python is a programming language and it's a advanced programming language and they can be applied in many fields. So most typical example is data science, artificial, artificial intelligence. And these are features of Python statement and uh, we will go through the features of Python, Python statements uh, using maybe GP notebook during the programming part. So these are advantage of Python. So the key advantage of Python is simple. It's very easy to learn. And of course it's open source. And so for the environment, we're gonna use Anaconda. So wait a second. We're gonna use Anaconda. First you need to I will show. You need to open the Anaconda prompt. You need to open the Anaconda prompt and use this command, Jupyter Notebook, enter, and you will jump to the home page of your Jupyter Notebook. And you can click here, new. You can new a uh, Python 3 notebook. So. I can create a new GP notebook here. It's so slow. So we can create a new GP notebook like this new Python 3 or other kernels, you can use TensorFlow 2, TensorFlow 1, TensorFlow 2.1, and you can install a lot of kernels. So for example, I will show you. Okay. So if you, open your anaconda prompt you will see the screen will be like this this we are now we are in base environment so if you want to install tensorflow just keep install tensorflow equals like this and you can install a name package like maybe pandas pandas like this any other package maple link use pip install and you can check the packages you installed use pip list like this here is a package i've installed so the tensorflow version i've in, i've installed is 1.13.1 so that is how to use so if we want to open uh, Jupyter Notebook. Just type Jupyter Notebook and enter. You will come to the home page of the Jupyter Notebook. It's local host. And here we would ex explain some basic grammars use these commands, use these lines, use this code. So first key point of 
Python. This, this again talk about the basic data structures of Python, that is list, tuples, tuples, strings, or dictionaries, and set. So first some basic programmer, basic programmer in Python. If we want to print something, we just use print hello world. So print is a function. So there is the hypothesis, the print, and followed by a string hello world. You can use a single quote or double quotes or triple quotes, both okay. And first, we're gonna talk about the data data type, the data structures, the first, oh, sorry. So the basic program, the <laughs> to check if your environment, your Python environment works, we can just use this command, print hello world double code triple code, single code, double code, or triple code, both okay. And to create a, uh, there are a lot of data types. So the typical data type of Python of a lot of programming language, that is the number, that is the numbers, the float, int, the blue, and these, these are very easy. So we will jump to the data structures directly. And so for the list, the first question is to create a list. That is, if you wanna create, sorry, if you wanna create a list, we just use the bracket the square bracket. Mm -hmm. So create a list. We will use this expression. And the key point of the of a list that is that list is an order set of elements. And we can change the elements when once we, we've created a list, we can add or delete elements any time. And, sorry, and the data types, the elements data types in a list can be different. And if we wanna index, if we wanna index a list, so the index of the list is from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and the inverse index will start from minus one. So there are some common operations of the list. We can update, we can delete. So we can add elements, we can delete elements, we can compare two elements, we can output, we can use len, this building function to output, to output the length of a list. We can use max to get the maximum value in a list. And there are some other methods of list. And so we will write some code first to define a list. We will define a list like this. There's something wrong with my kernel and to check the type of a variable we can use type type is a building function in python and to define a list we can use this expression to define a list also this the second way to define a list is we can use the list function so list function is also a building function to define a list. We can use list function to define a list and we can use expressions like 
this the square bracket to define a list. And here, here this cell is an example example to check if the list is empty or not. So these items, these items is a empty list, and to check if it's an empty list, we can use this len the building function. And if this len equals to zero, if it if it equals to zero, it's an empty list. And also we can use expressions like this to check if the list is a empty list. So these two cell to check the list if it's empty or not. And another, the next one is some operations about the list. So we've mentioned that the elements in the, in the list can, the data type of the elements in the list can be different. So it can be numbers or it can be streams or it can be other data structures. For example, here we define a old list. So in old list, the first element, the first element is a string and the rest of the elements are int and numbers. And to copy a list, so to copy a list, we can use expressions like this to copy a list from the start to the end. That is, no, that is from zero to, <coughs> sorry, that is from zero to minus one. But if we use expressions like this to index a list, so that is we will get the element from one to three. So the index, the first index, hello, the, this index is zero and zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. So we will start from this one and two and three. So, but the output is only two elements, one and 21, not 31. So for Python, if we index some data structure, if we index a list or a tuples, if we do indexing and the rule will be, the right side will be closed and the left side will be open. So this side is closed. So we will get the index one and the left, left right side is open. So, so we will not pick up the index three, the element at index three. So that is the index of a list. And to copy a list, we can use expressions like this, the old list and square bracket include by and square bracket and follow by this expression, this expression, old list. And this is the first method to copy a list. And the second method to copy a list is old list dot copy. So we can use a method like dot copy to copy a list. So we've mentioned that the index of a list from left to right is from one and the index from right to left is from minus one. So if we wanna pick up, if we wanna get the last element of the list, we can use this expression minus one. So minus one means the last element of the list. And so a list is changeable. We can change the elements, the elements value in a list. So we can add, we can delete, we can insert. So here we can use append 
Here A is a list and we use A the append append 44. So the 44 will be added into the list. So the last element will be 44. So if we want to add an element anywhere in the list, we, we need to use insert. So A the insert and where you want to insert that is index two. So why you gonna insert what kind of element? What what element you wanna insert? So as the grammar of insert uh, element into a list. So here is the output. We will insert okay this string, this string into the index two. So <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about is to remove an element from the list. So here, we create a list A that is 0, 2, 2, 3, 0, 2, 2, 3. We insert 3 in the first element, in the first element, into the first element, so the List A becomes like three zero two two three, and if if you are new to Python, you can program, you can code according. You can try these commands. You can try these codes by your by yourself. Use your own computer, and we can print and we can remove elements from a list so we can use remove two so the first two will be removed from the list a and if we use remove seven and you will be value arrow because there's no seven in list a so <laughs> wait a second I will restart the kernel. So wait a second, I will restart the kernel because there's something wrong with practice with your own GPL notebook. It will be very easy for those who have experience in Python, but we need to take care of everyone, make sure that everyone understands the basic grammars about Python. So to we talk about how to append elements, how to insert, how to remove elements from a list, and then another the next operation about the list is to connect two lists together. So we define two lists, list one and list two, and we can use this expression 
that is list one plus list two to add two lists together. So, and also we can use a pet extend. We can use extend that is list one extend list two to connect the list together. And here, if we use append, so if we use append, list one is a uh, list one, two, three, and here we append another list, the output will be like this. So this list will be considered as an element in the list. So that is some method to connect two lists together. So that is some basic operations about a list. So next we're going to talk about is tuples. And tuples are very similar with list. And we define tuples use expressions like this. Expression like this is very simple to create. And the difference between tuples and list, the significant difference is that a tuple cannot be modified once it is defined. So it's unchangeable. We cannot change the value. We cannot change the value of elements in the tuples. So there is no methods like append, insert, or remove. It cannot be changed once the a tuple is defined, so it's unchangeable, and it will be more secure compared to list. So, if possible, we will use tuples rather rather than lists. So, <laughs> here we can also compare to tuples get the length of the tuple, get to the maximum value, the minimum value of uh, tuple also we can come we can <coughs> make we can convert we can convert a list use into a tuple use this building function tuple and we can also delete a tuple here we may go back to the notebook to have a look of some basic operations about tuple first to define a tuple we will use expressions like this. We use parentheses, yeah, uh, to define a tuple. Parentheses is common to define a tuple like this. We define a tuple t, or we define a tuple t, and we can print t and use type the building function to check the data structure of t. So. If we want to define a tuple, define a tuple only got only contains one element, we need to add common. We need to expressions like we need to use expression like this one common, and then we can check the data structure of T two. So tuple is unchangeable once we've defined a tuple we cannot change the value of a tuple but <coughs> but if like like list like list in a tuple like list in a in a tuple the data structure the data type of elements can be different it can be Int, it can be string, it can be a list, it can be a set. So, if like here we define, we define a tuples like this. If here the last element, the element of this, the, I have no idea what's wrong with my kernel. I cannot program here so maybe i will show you guys to define a changeable tuple we can change the values of a tuple the if 
the elements, the first element in a tuple has a list, we can change the values in the, we can change the value in the list, we can change the element in the, in a list. And for tuple, if we want to index, if we want to index a tuple and the method is the same with the, with the list, the index also from zero, the index from zero, one, two, three, four, five. And the inverse index also from minus one. That is, that is tuples. And the key point about the tuple and it is unchangeable. We can, we cannot modify the value of a tuple once it, the initialized and the, I have a question. Where where we can use these tuples? Where? G. Where or what for what purpose? For for what purpose? Because yeah. Because uh, 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 these these are data these are data structure these are data structures. So if we want to define some. Some maybe like uh, a sentence, a sent a sentence maybe, and here uh, maybe this sentence like because a tuple is unchangeable, and we can have a lookup dic dictionary. We can have a lookup dic dictionary, and maybe one represent because and two represent uh, and four represent tuples and or tuples and 10 reprint is and we can convert it, this sentence into a into a tuple and do some operations based on the tuple and the reason why we need tuples is that it's unchangeable so it will be more secure compared to other data structures like list dictionaries or state so okay okay Thank you. So the next data structure we're going to talk about is dictionaries. So tuples and also diction tuples and list are ordered sequence and dictionaries is not a, a ordered sequence. It's unordered. It don't have any ordered. So we use this format to define a dictionary. So the curly bracket to define a dictionary. And within this curly bracket, within this curly bracket, there will be a lot of key value pairs, key value pairs. So like here, key value pairs, the first key value pairs. And we use a command to separate key value pairs and so that is how to define a dictionary. We use this format to define a dictionary and let's have a look of some code. And here, for example, we define a dictionary, A as a dictionary. And so a dictionary is these the key value pairs don't have um don't have order it's out of order so if we cannot index we cannot index the key value pairs the dictionary like list or tuples we cannot use a1 a2 a0 to pick up the key value pairs from a dictionary and to create a dictionary we use expressions like this so in this dictionary a we got one, two, three. We got three key value pairs and we can print A. And the second method to create a dictionary is use the building function in Python that is dict to, to create dictionary, to create a dictionary. And we will use it, these expressions to represent one key value pair 
and we use common to separate different key value pairs and in a dictionary and in a dictionary the keys the keys like this the keys should be unique so but the values can be the same so that means for the key one that is key one the corresponding value could be one and for the key two the corresponding value could also be one and two here oh okay here is another the third the third method the third method to create a dictionary we can use zip function so in zip we got to list the first list contains all the keys and the second list contains all the values and we will use the function and the dict function these are all building functions and <laughs> here we can if we create a dictionary like this here is our dictionary we got three key value pairs the first key value pair is john and the position is ceo and nasty the position is hr and the the position is uh, engineer and to look up to pick up the key values to from a dictionary and we can use expressions like these the name of the dictionary is include a and why you want to pick up we want to check the position of join so we will use expressions like this and it will output the corresponding value to the key join and if we enter a wrong key and it will be key arrow because there is no such key and also we can use employees gate that means we can also gate the values to the corresponding to the corresponding key we can get the values to your corresponding key but here gate can follow by a expression that means if there is no such key that is NAC. If there's no such key, the output will be unknown. So that is a difference between this expression and the gate method. So that is the creation, how to create a dictionary. And then here's an another some other operations about dictionary we can create a dictionary like this for example create a dictionary like this there is a different method three different methods to create a dictionary use curly brackets that is and enter every key value pairs and we can use dict the building functions also the dict the building functions to create the dictionary x and to copy to get a copy of the dictionary we can use master copy to create a copy of a dictionary and to change the value of some of some key we can use expression lastly like this so this is this is the d this is a dictionary and if we want to change the value of this corner we can use expressions like this and here is the output here is the output also if we look up the key value pairs if the key doesn't exist you will output the key arrow and here's another 
example, also the gate example to look up the value of some of some specific of specific case. We can use gate if the if the value if the key doesn't exist, there will be no error. There will be no error, but output none or some specific notice. So if we use gate, it will not output any arrow. And also we can use mass, this method to pick up the keys, the values and items. So if we use D keys, we can pick up all the keys. So all the keys from the dictionary here are three keys, food, quant quantity and color. And also we can use values, data values to pick up all the values from the dictionary. So, and also we can use data items to pick up all the items. So the output will be like this. The output is a list. So it's a list. And in the list, every element is a tip is a tuple is a tuple and every element is a is a tuple and in this tuple in every tuple we got key and value so to clear a dictionary we can use data clear so after this operation the dictionary will be a empty dictionary and if we use Dale, the building function, if we use Dale, we will completely delete this dictionary. So if we use print, there will be name arrow. There's no such dictionary. So that is some basic operations about dictionary. We go through the operations, some basic commonly used operations about dictionary one by one. So maybe that's all for today. So we talk about the overview of AI. So the key point of the first chapter is the past of AI. Why is AI the present of AI? And then we talk about the Python part and the introduction of Python is not the key section and we talk about the list, the tuples or tuples or dictionaries that is the data structure of python and um, tomorrow we're going to continue to talk about other data structures like strings and states in python and also some more operations some more grammars about python how to define a self how to define a function how to use conditional or looping statement and the how to define a class a parent class or child class and the how to process the date and time in python and also the regular expression and the file multi, ma manipulation so the key part of this section is the list and tuples dictionaries strings and conditional and looping statement functions and object oriented Entity programming. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These six sections are the key points in this Python programming basic chapter. So that's all for today. So any question? Also, I will show you guys the. Any question? If if you don't have any question, if you have any question about the environment installation, you can send me the email, just screenshot the your arrow or your problem and uh, we were trying to figure out and uh, also the WeChat problem, the security problem and uh, we were trying to figure out after the class if we have any question about the training about the exam and um, or if you want any material I should during the class you can send me the email and 
So remember so, my. Uh, I am I am new to Python. So can you send me the basic documents related to Python programming? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I will. I will send you Jup. I will send you the Jupyter file I've showed just now. Is that okay? Oh. Yes, yes, uh, and and whatever you feel that the, the the basic documentation, whatever you feel that is good for the for the someone who is new to programming, then it would be agreed. Okay, 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 okay. I will send you the materials, the slides, and the Jupyter notebook files to you, to you guys after the after the class. And if you have any question, you can contact me with my email address. And also, one more question: uh, When we complete that this training, uh, is Huawei is going to provide us some voucher or exam facility uh, for this HCIA? Uh, when you complete the training session, maybe one or two weeks later, you have to pass the certificate exam and the HCAI exam. There's two exam the certification exam and also the exam for instructors. So, so is there any deadline for for us to complete this these two exams? Any day nine. Maybe your local manager would arrange this 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 exam for you guys. And oh. so maybe all of you guys need to take the exam after one or two weeks later. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay, if you don't have any other questions, so that's all for today. If you have any suggestions, any questions, any problems, please contact me. And also, another thing to mention, please, please, please do the questionnaire. Thank you so much. So that's all for today.